Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Optibottom is coming with another video review. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Mondo 1 6 scale Leonardo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Specifically, this will be the Mondo exclusive version. For the package, you got really cool art of Leonardo there in the front, as well as the Nickelodeon and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle logo there at the top. And then as I said, this is the Mondo exclusive, and you get a little sticker right there to indicate that. The size of the package does feature that same Nickelodeon and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle logo, as well as the Mondo logo here on the bottom. And then in the back of the package, you have an image of all four of the turtles jumping down from the top of some buildings. And then as you can see, the style for the art as well as the figures is more designed around the original Mirage comic look. And then when you come back to the front of the package, it actually has an opening flap that's attached via Velcro. And then you have an open window that fully showcases the figure as well as all of his accessories. As well as on the opposite side, you have actual concept art of Leonardo himself. But for the packaging on this guide, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. Alright guys, so here we have the 1-6 scale Leonardo from Mondo open up and out of its packaging. And this guy has really been a long time coming. Now Mondo is not necessarily known as being a toy company. So through an extensive amount of development and unfortunately a few delays, it has taken a long time to get them. So expectations are really very high on them. So coming in to take a closer look at his accessories first, and as you can see, he actually comes with a really nice assortment of different accessories. Now, like I mentioned, this is the Mondo exclusive version, which at a price of $10 more than the regular release, you do get this exclusive Shredder gauntlet with it. In the original Mirage comic, this actually appeared at the end of the book. After the turtles killed Shredder, and yes, they killed him, and people always ask, why did you kill you know, your main villain? Well, Eastman and Laird went on to say that, well, they didn't expect to do more books. So killing him really didn't matter that much, and subsequently they brought him back, although he was a clone. Shredder did return, now, but this is the original Shredder's actual blade armor, which looks really very cool. You can see some nice wear throughout the entire thing. Nice paint variation with some you know, silver and black kind of thrown in there. Uh, it is just the, the armor, his arm's not in there, so you don't get a severed arm or anything. But as I said, for an additional $10, you get the exclusive version and you get this piece with it, which honestly, I do think is a nice addition. It is far more limited and the exclusive set sold out almost instantly. So I think a lot of people really liked having this. But for the standard accessories, everything else that you see here is what you get. You get this nice grappling hook, which one thing that I will say is that uh, it does look like it's a little bit like skewed in terms of the, the actual molding on it. Like, I mean, you can see this one is all bent and everything. Uh, it doesn't really look like it's symmetrical, which is kind of a weird thing. I don't know if that's how they intended it to look, but you can see you actually have a nice rope string on here so you can swing that around. Really very cool. You got a nice silver paint on there as well. And then in addition to the two clutching fists that are currently on them, exclusive to Leonardo, you also do get this uh, leader pointing finger, I, I think is what they call it. It's just got him pointing. So I think each turtle comes with a, a slightly different uh, hand that is just exclusive to them and this is the one that comes with leo as you can see it just has a little peg in here so it swaps in and out very easily and then you do get a right and left pair of hands that have a, a climbing sort of thing on here you got these nice straps that go around and then nails that protrude from it which is how the turtles actually scaled walls and things of that nature in the original comics so you do get those as well. You also do get a couple of ninja stars. You got a, a eight-sided shuriken right here, which you can see is just this nice silver paint. You do get two of those. And his clutching hand here does hold them very nicely. And then you get a pair of a four-pointed shurikens, as you can see. And then you got some nice uh, black paint that's actually on there. You got little holes and everything on there. Same with this, but the holes are a lot bigger on the uh, four-sided one. But uh, again, he can hold these very nicely in his uh, clutching hands. Those are what those are designed for. You also do get a pair of his katanas. You got a nice silver paint throughout the actual blade. The uh, handguard right here has a nice gold paint on there. The handle itself has some red paint with some gold accents throughout the middle portions. And then the pommel has a nice bit of gold as well. Uh, it, 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 they are just plastic, so it, it would have been nice if maybe these were done out of a, a metal. If I could have changed something on these swords, I would have probably done that. But you do have these. Another nice accessory that you get that isn't something that you really do see a lot with Ninja Turtles, but it's cool that they included this, is you get an actual Utron gun. 
they battled the Utrom in you know the early editions of the comics, and it's nice to get a, a slightly different accessory for him. You do have a nice silver brush on here with some black kind of thrown in there. Could have been a little bit cleaner in some of the paint details. Uh, I, I don't mind it all that much because it is more designed to look like the comic book, so it's a little bit, I, I guess, sloppy, but I think that it works with the aesthetic that they were going for in terms of you know capturing that comic look. And then you also do get little teeny tiny uh, inarticulated sort of figurines. You get an unmutated version of Leonardo. As you can see, real great detail on here. Again, you got some nice paint wash throughout the entire thing. But I, I love the fact that you get a little unmutated version of him. I think that's adorable. And then you get another unmutated version of Splinter, who's actually in a, a pose where he's kind of practicing like karate and stuff. You got some nice paint detail on here for his tail. The uh, fur has a nice black and brown wash throughout it. So, again, I mean, they're, they're not articulated, and I really wouldn't expect them to be. They're just real cool accessories to have in addition to everything. They look great displayed with the figure. And the one final accessory that you get is an alternate head. Now, the only thing really different is the bandana color. As you can see, it's done in this red paint, which is more in line with how the original comics were. All the turtles actually had red bandanas. Well, actually, they didn't have much of a color as the original ones were just black and white. But when they introduced the colored uh, covers, they actually did give all the turtles red bandanas, which is where this comes from. The actual blue color wasn't something that was added until the original cartoon line, which said we need to differentiate them more than just their weapons. Because that's really the only way that you could tell them apart by just looking at them in the pages of the comics was their weapons. So putting them on you know, the TV screen, they changed that up. They also did change the tone of green on the actual figure, which is something I'll get to in a bit. But I really do love this head sculpt uh, as that these are more designed to replicate the uh, comics themselves. This is something that I absolutely love. I do love the colors, don't get me wrong. But in terms of the overall aesthetic, I think this just works a whole lot better. And then for the uh, swapping of this, out you just pull this off very easily and then pop this on now some people were really complaining about the overall tightness of that one thing that you can do to really fix it and make it a whole lot easier to pop it off of the actual ball section is a couple different things you can put this in boiling hot water that takes a little bit longer obviously to do because you have to boil it and you don't want to burn yourself or anything but you just put it in there for a few brief min like a minute and then take it out it's gonna be a little bit softer pop it on the actual ball section, and then put the entire figure in a freezer. You're going to stretch this out just a little, and then when you, like I said, put it in the freezer, that'll solidify the plastic in that shape. You can also use a hair dryer. That goes a little bit quicker. I unfortunately don't have a hair dryer. But you can see that uh, they pop off very, very easily, and they also stay on there really well. So that's a nice little uh, tip for you guys if you want to swap things out. So accessory-wise, I think that you get a lot, even if you do just get the standard version. I did want to get the exclusive one because I love these little touches, and all of the other uh, turtles when they come out will have an exclusive uh, piece with them as well. So I just like having the most possible. So accessory wise, that's everything. Now, coming in to take a closer look at the figure, like I said, this is more designed to look like how Leonardo looked in the original comics, but there is something that is a little bit different that I don't see a lot of people touching on, and that's the way that this actual strap is. Now, in the first three issues, he actually did not have this shoulder strap. This didn't come into existence until the uh, Raphael and Casey Jones like one-off comic. And then from there on, the issues four, five, and then all the other ones had him with this strap. So in terms of the accuracy, he still has it, but it really only is accurate after the third issue. That's just something that me as a Ninja Turtle nerd, I wanted to make sure that I pointed out. But the rest of it does look really good. Uh, you can see that you have the nice brown paint here for the strap. Come around here, you can see his sheaths. One thing that I will say is that a lot of people are complaining about this being damaged. And mine actually was as well. I have since glued it down. But when I took it out of the package, this uh, one of these straps, I, I think it was this one actually, was broken off from the shell. Uh, the p actual material here, uh, it feels fairly uh, rigid uh, but it's a little bit softer but one thing that I'll say is that I think what is causing problems and a lot of people are apparently having them is that these are really wedged into the plastic clamshell so when you're taking it out I think people are inadvertently breaking it by pulling it out very forcefully uh, so I would be careful when you're taking it out 
Uh, like I said, mine, uh, this one was the one that was broken. Uh, I, I'm trying to see here. You, you can't really tell because, like I said, I glued it back underneath there. But I know that Pixel Dan had a problem with his, and several other viewers of mine have expressed that problem as well. So that's something to be very careful of. But good detail, I still think. You got a nice paint variation with green and black going throughout the shell. Nice nicks throughout the entire thing. I do like the overall texture and detail on the sheets themselves. Coming back around again, you have that more cartoon accurate blue bandana, and then the colors scheme for his skin tone is a little bit darker. Some of the other turtles that Mondo are releasing will have a little bit different of a shade, a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, things like that. That's something also that is more you know, cartoon accurate. So what they did was kind of did you know, a compromise between the original comics and the original cartoon. And I think it worked out pretty good. I don't mind the different skin tone. Some people it bothers, but it, it doesn't bother me. I would absolutely love just going on the record of getting actual black and white versions of, of this. I would love that like you wouldn't believe. But still really nice detail. Uh, you can see he's got his you know, brown elbow pads and wrist straps. Good detail with the muscles and things. I love the little nicks and pain variation through his little torso section. You come down here. Yes, he does have a tail. People make weird jokes about it all the time. And I'll point it out that, yes, he does have it. But the original comics did have that. That's not what you think it is, guys. It's a tail. I know someone's going to bring it up, and I'm just going to address it right now. Uh, but then you got some nice detail down here with these uh, knee pads and then you got the feet down here as well. So overall, really nice detail throughout the entire piece. I like the color on them. I think that it looks very good. And bringing in the NECA one for comparison, this is my all-time favorite. But like I was talking about, NECA actually nailed the look for the original first three issues of the comic series. You can see they don't have that strap that comes across the shoulder like that. But you also have the little uh, tie section right down here. And he's a little bit more narrow, which is how they looked in the, the very first drawings. And then as the uh, comic series developed, they got a little bit bulkier. And that's what Mondo really got here. And then bringing in the old tape measure, you can see that he comes in a little bit less than 10 inches tall. So as I said, six scale, so that works out to be about 60 inches tall or about five feet, which I think works perfectly. And then obviously you have his katanas that come around here and you can store these very nicely in his back sheaths. Again, being very little, uh, careful when you're doing it just because you don't want to damage anything because like I said, these do feel like they're a little bit softer of a, or more brittle, I should say, of a plastic. So you do want to be careful. Now for the articulation, that's one thing that uh, I, I am a little bit disappointed in. As a six scale figure, I'm used to them having a lot of articulation put into them. And that's not to say that this doesn't, but I think that they could have done a little bit better of a job. Uh, for a starters here the head is only on a ball joint there's no neck rotation or anything like that which it would have been nice if they could have actually made that swivel somehow uh, you also do have a little bit of a ball joint here at the bandana so you can rotate that around as well uh, the shoulders here are on pin hinge joints so they hinge outward just like so they also rotate forward and back very nicely some of the joints i will say are really nicely ratcheted like for example the shoulders but then you have swivels here for the rest of them and some of them are a little bit loose mine's not too terribly bad but i have seen some that are really floppy you can rotate him here at the actual uh, bicep but then you also have a rotation here at the elbow so it does get a little bit tricky because you're rotating one and one doesn't always go along with it so it's a little bit tricky to do but you do have those two different points of articulation but you only have one bend here at the elbow which is a little unfortunate i would have loved a, a double elbow joint there uh, one thing that uh, is kind of funny and i'm seeing a lot of people having this problem as well is the the sculpting here for the arms are actually a little bit different you can see that you got the bicep section up here and then the tricep here at the bottom a lot of times in the package and mine was like this as well the actual bicep was rotated here at the bottom this is actually the tricep so you want to make sure that you rotate that around when you're displaying it it looks a little bit better and like i said you can tell that it's the tricep just the way that it kind of is molded here if you look at an actual tricep that's kind of how they actually look so make sure that you're positioning that in the right way so good articulation there in the upper part of the arms the wrists do rotate very nicely and then they hinge forward and back like i said you have the little section here <laughs> keep pulling keep and i'm rotating and it's not going to want to come out but you get the idea that's how you pull it out if you have any problems like i was talking about with stiff joints though 
just put a hair dryer under it or use some boiling hot water that'll loosen up and it'll pull off really easily uh, now he doesn't have any kind of torso articulation that's a little bit tricky to put in it but you know we could see like some companies actually kind of put it in there as they make it a separate piece from the uh, the front section here and the shell so that would have been nice to see i also really don't like what they did here with the hips they use the pin hinge joints like they use here for the arms so what that basically means is they do rotate but then you also have a rotation here and you can see this is really uh, very loose right here i'm not a big fan of that but what you have is you can move it forward and you can move it back but to move it in and out you then have to rotate it out to get it to move out like so now it's not troublesome it just takes a little bit extra time but i would have preferred a different kind of joint system there for the hips so like right now i can only move them forward and back i can't move them outward you have to then rotate them and then do it like that so it's just a little bit of an annoyance i guess more than anything it's not too bad uh yes the tail is articulated you can rotate that around that's like on a little ball joint so you can move that like i was showing you have the uh, thigh that can also swivel but up in the top section here also does rotate so you've got two very close rotation sections which as you rotate it like for example this rotates but it doesn't rotate this so it's a little bit tricky and it does require some patience when you're trying to pose uh, the knees here are on double joints which are nice but do look a little bit weird because what they did is and i'm trying to this bottom one here is a little bit stuck so i'm trying to flex that here let's try this leg yeah well all right that didn't work either all right, that was a little bit tricky. I had to break that little joint down here, but you got an upper joint right here, and then you have this lower section that bends. And to me, that looks a little bit strange, and you can, and you can see just how kind of floppy that is. To me, that just looks unnatural. I'm not a big fan of how they did that. And when you look at the up, upper arm right here, you can see that they got the elbow pad as part of the sculpt of the lower section. So I, I, I mean, I appreciate that they put the double joint in there. You get a nice range of motion with it. I just think that they could have did that better. It, it just, like I said, that doesn't look all that good. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but uh, I do appreciate that there are two joints in there. And then the ankles move forward and back very nicely, and they also do kind of swivel right here. They're kind of attached on like a angular peg, so it rotates out. So you can get a nice range of motion with it and get a very wide uh, kind of pose with them. So lots of articulation in them. Um, I just think that for a six scale figure, as I said, I'm a little bit more used to more points of articulation in there. Uh, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination but uh, when you are paying 150 dollars for a figure you do want a little bit more in it and i think some extra joints would have really helped to uh, create some dynamic poses for them and really would have separated this from other release versions of uh, leonardo in terms of a comic sort of representation ultimately though i am really happy with how this figure turned out the look on it is really very well done the sculpting, I think, is very nice. The paint detail is really cool. All the accessories that you get are fantastic. But there are a few aspects of it that I really would have liked to have seen improved on. And hopefully with their future releases, they will. Specifically speaking about the joints and the unfortunate varying degree of tightness. Hopefully that's something that they can address as this line does move forward. But as I said, I am really happy with how they turned out. Now, unfortunately, like I said, the exclusive version has long been sold out. But the regular retail version, which is $10 cheaper, is available at many different online retailers such as Big Bad Toy Store. So all you have to do for that is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to BBTS where you can check out availability on this as well as the rest of the Mondo 1-6 scale Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optibotomous. Don't forget that if you like this video, so please hit that thumbs up button. It goes a long way towards helping me out, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, be sure to subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you get instant email notifications whenever I upload a new video, and you never miss out on a future review of mine. Or if you're already subscribed, be sure to click on that little bell on my homepage and double check your settings to make sure that they're set so that you get those email notifications. And as always, until next time, cowabunga, dudes!